So about a year after it opened, I'm here again in Free Play. Free Play Lanaken, which is in Belgium, near uh, Maastricht, Netherlands, right on the Belgian-Dutch border. And uh, the, the place has changed a lot over the last year, so I'm going to walk through and look at each machine like I did last year. And uh, he's got some new additions, and he's uh, definitely um, got some uh, really nice machines now. So because it's uh, in the middle of COVID, unfortunately, he has to spread the machines out. and. Uh, that meant that he had to actually get rid of some machines. So as you see, there's some spaces between machines now, but um, but it's still a pretty nice uh, nice selection he has here. So you first walk in, you know he's got uh, uh, selling food and uh, drinks and T-shirts, and this place is about 15 euros all day, or about uh, tw I think 12 euros or 10 euros for two hours or something like that. But I did the all day, and um, some of the machines I uh, remember from last time, this uh, Shrek here from Stern, um, Sega Apollo 13, that was here last time. A uh, pretty neat machine, got a 13 ball multi-ball. It's kind of kind of weird though when you get into the multi-ball. Most of the balls go straight down the toilet. Uh, looks like he's got a Galaga. I'm not sure if that's an original or a repro. It looks original. Um, really clean machine there. Uh, Donkey Kong. Uh, he's got a dig duck here now, and a couple of uh, a couple of the cabaret style uh, racing games, Turbo Outrun and Outrun. Those are pretty, pretty cool. Uh, these were here before, Back to the Future by Daddy's. Um, this is a weird machine that they never got the license for Marty McFly for uh, Michael J. Fox. So that I think it was the artist or the game designer put his own son's image on the game. So. Uh, uh, then we got an Indy 500 here, and uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool machine. It was here last time. Never really learned this game. Uh, probably put some time on it. It's got like a car that runs around in a circle. I guess it's part of the race. Um, then you got a, a Jurassic Park by Daddy East. Um, Stern come out with a Jurassic Park uh, maybe uh, two years ago, and it's a fantastic game. I have played that and uh, wouldn't mind getting one someday. And they got a Bram Stoker Dracula, from Williams, and a Demo Man. Uh, both in really nice shape. All his games here are in really good shape. Uh, I'll say that about him. He's open three days a week, and you know, eventually the games will get a, a lot of play here. Uh, maybe once COVID's over, is, um, you know, he's able to have more people in here at a time. But um, anyway, the play fields are in good shape. And uh, this was here last time. It's kind of a mechanical pong game. Uh, maybe some of these racers are new. I can't quite remember. Got a Battle Gear 3 over there. Not sure what that is. This looks, uh, this looks new. I don't remember this. Darius Burst EX. Hmm. Not really into that. It might be a Japanese import. It's the Japanese uh, writing up here. Yeah. Yeah, this is an import from Japan, huh? The whole uh, instruction panels and in, uh, panels in Japanese. Wow. And it's even marked 100 yen to play. Wow. I'll have to ask him about that. See how he got that here. How he imported that back to uh, or here into Europe. So. He's got a uh, little basketball shooter thingy here. Hoop it up. Looks like it's shooting ping pong balls. Um, and he's got a centipede, a bubble bobble. Bubble bobble's a cool game. Is this an original? Maybe it is. Not sure. I really like that game. Um, not really collecting many arcades right now. I'm doing pinball, but. Someday I'd like to uh, get one of those. This looks like a Reaper Miss Pac-Man, but it's done well. There's no coin door on it. But, um, yeah, it looks really nice. Okay, in the uh, pinball here, they got a, well, 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 look at these two. They got a Ghostbusters and an ACDC. Um, and the Ghostbusters, I think, is, is the premium. I think that's the premium. I don't want to get too close, people playing it here. And then they got a really nice ACDC as well. Those are fairly new. Uh, Daddy Simpsons, that was here before. Uh, 
it's a cool game. It doesn't get much love because I think the, uh, what is it, the um, Stern or Williams, who does the other Simpsons? I can't remember now. Kind of overshadows this game, but it's still, still pretty nice for what it is. Uh, Valley Atlantis. Pretty, pretty game. We got a fun house here. Of course, we got a fun house in our collection. This fun house is actually for sale um, because he's, uh, he's actually um, getting rid of some machines because he has to make room for some more here. So this fun house, he told me, is actually for sale. And um, I don't know how long it's going to still be here. But if you're looking for a fun house, come down to uh, Free Play and knock him. And then we got a Star Trek Next Gen here. Really good shape. I'm not really a Star Trek fan, but uh, this is a beautiful machine. I think it's a Steve Ritchie design. I'm gonna say there's four Star Trek pins that have been made now. So, it's a wide body. I guess the same as Twilight Zone and uh, um, Judge Dredd. And, uh, got a uh, William Cyclone, one of the three uh, carnival based uh, machines by Williams. Um, the other one was Comet and Hurricane, I think, are the other two. Um, Playfield's in really good shape. I have to ask him about this. It looks in really, really good shape. Now, Cyclone, I, I know for Comet, they're making a hard stop uh, reproduction for this. But this looks, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that's a hard top or what that is. Maybe it's a re reproduction from CPR or from Merco, Merco Playfield. I have to ask him about that. Looks uh, looks amazing. It's in great shape. Okay, here's the uh, going into the other hall, the other side he has here. He's getting Indiana Jones by Williams. Um, fantastic game. He's got a, a Williams Junkyard. Don't really understand this game all too well, and um, I really need to learn the rules. This game right here. Definitely my favorite game in the whole place. It is a uh, Tales of the Arabian Nights by Williams. Um, I am I am gonna find one of these one day. Um, go for pretty big money, um, but you know, deals can be found. I think the artwork on this one's a little bit faded. The color colors a little bit faded, but it's a uh, really really fantastic game for its time. I think it was late '90s or mid-90s, maybe sometime around Twilight Zone, and, uh, yeah. The music and the, uh, the artwork, it's just fantastic. really, really like it. And I love the spinner, the, the, the genie's lamp on the play field spins around. Kind of harkens back to some, some older EMs used to do that in the day, and, um, I think it adds a, a an element of uh, randomness to the game. Really cool. Okay, yeah, he's got a Williams Whitewater here. It's in great shape. This is a fast playing game by Williams and a lot of ramps and uh, a lot to do. Um, this is in great shape. And, um, yeah, here's a better shot of the, uh, the Tales of Arabian Nights, or Toten as they call it, Toten. So you got the genie's lamp here that spins around. Um, here's the skill shot up on the side. Of course, the, the genie himself in the back. There's a magnet here. I've never actually been able to get that to activate. I'm not sure how to how to get to that mode in the game, but um, I mean, look at the artwork. You got the reflection there. But the artwork's fantastic. got a guitar viewer here with a wall of Marshall amps. Thankfully they're not all on. Not sure if those are real or those are just there for show, but um, he does evidently do some music here because he's got a little DJ rig set up and um, got this place kitted out pretty well for parties or something. Um, so these guys are rocking out to that guitar hero. Got an afterburner climax here. I might have to try that. Pretty cool. We got the Stearns Pirates of the Caribbean. And um, of course, uh, JJP Jersey Jack Pinball makes a Pirates game that um, 
they didn't make too many of and um, uh, but this is uh, it's in good shape this game here is by uh, by Stern and um, never actually played it I'm gonna check that out uh, Williams getaway of course I've got the uh, high speed one in my collection this is uh, the second one by Steve Ritchie and uh, there was rumors that maybe they were going to make a high speed three, but it, Rich, Steve Ritchie and Stern ended up doing uh, Black Knight Sword of Rage, which is the third Black Knight then. But um, these, you know, I, I think that these are, are coming down in price. I saw a couple here in Europe that were uh, right around the $2,000 mark. Uh, in the States, they seem to go for three and, and, and upwards. So. Keep my eyes out for that. Um, these people here are playing the Theater of Magic, which is an incredible game also by, by, by Bally at the time. It wasn't Williams anymore. And um, this machine is um, also on the list, I think, eventually. I'd like to find one. Um, it's got so much to do. There's a lot of variety in the machine. The artwork is also really incredible. Um, you know, these, these rabbits here. They look pretty evil. They remind me of uh, the rabbit coming out of the hat from Twilight Zone. Um, but I guess the object of the game, I'm not really sure the object of the game. <laughs> I played it a lot, but I didn't quite understand the rules. But you've got this uh, treasure chest here that you hit a couple times and it'll spin around and then you lock balls going underneath. And I think you, you can also lock a ball with the magnet on the side, uh, sitting right here. Um, but it's a really smooth shooting game. It's, it's got a lot of, uh, uh, for a narrow body game, it's not a wide body, it's a standard narrow body. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six different lanes here. And then of course the ramps flow really well. Kind of like uh, Totem, uh, Tales of Arabian Nights, the ramps are also uh, really, really uh, flowy and swoopy and <laughs> kind of like Circus Voltaire. I think the ramps are really well done. Um, so yeah, Theater Magic. I can't remember if we had that last time. Maybe he did. I don't remember, but that's a great machine. Um, Sega Baywatch. So not a game I would put in my collection, but it is a really well shooting game. And um, the prices have come up on these in the states anyway, because it is such a great shooter. Um, Got great artwork, a lot of ramps going on. You lock the ball up here in the in the lifeguard tower. So yeah, it's pretty slick. Uh, NBA fast break. Uh, pretty neat game that um, the scoring is actually pretty low. It's it's kind of like playing a basketball game. And um, you can actually link two of these machines together, so I've heard. And in the back here you've got like uh, a shot clock up there. And uh, I don't want to disturb this gentleman who's playing it, but I might have to come back to NBA Fast Break. I'm not really a basketball fan, but um, it does look pretty cool. This is the Stern Playboy. Uh, a couple of different Playboy games were made uh, by various uh, companies, and this is the Stern model. Um, and this one is uh, this one is R-rated, so I'm not going to get too close to it because behind the curtains and some of these other places, he's got. He's got uh, fully nude women on the play field and things and, and behind there. So, But I guess it doesn't come that way, but you can modify it. Um, I don't think it comes that way. I'm not really sure. Never really looked into it. Um, I hear it's a good shooting game. Um, I think I played it once when I was here last time. But, uh, uh, again, not a game I'd put in my collection. Just, you know, I'd be, em I'd be embarrassed to have the game if somebody came over to my house and I'd, I'd have to cover it up or something. But in this environment, it works, and um, yeah, that's cool. Um, got a uh, Stern Wheel of Fortune here, which is a pretty cool game. I played this last time I was here. I'm trying not to disturb the people as they play. Um, and then we got a uh, F-14 Tomcat, which is a cool um, Williams System 11 game from the um, mid to late 80s. keep going back and forth on this game whether I'm going to try to find one for myself someday but uh, um, it's got a pretty cool uh, slingshot on the left hand side that if you get it up there it fires the ball back out at about a million miles an hour so uh, yeah it's a, it's a pretty cool game try not to disturb this gentleman 
think okay, we got a Williams Fishtails here, which um, I haven't seen too many of these. And um, I'll have to sit and learn how to play it. I've not spent any time on the game at all. Um, it's a pretty cool uh, topper here. I think the fish moves, if I remember. I think it does. Uh, it kind of goes in line with the other Williams games of the time, like uh, No Good Gophers and... Maybe this is a Pat Lawler game? I'm not sure if it's a Pat Lawler game. Um, uh, it's Python Angela, Mark Ritchie, yeah, Playful Design, and... No, Pat Lawler was not in this game. Okay, but maybe he was, but... Um, but anyway, Mark Ritchie, uh, fantastic designer, and... Uh, that puts in time on this machine. This is Wayne's Fishtails. He's uh, this really good shape. Artwork's not really faded. And uh, yeah, here's the Stern Star Trek. I think this is the most recent Star Trek machine that's been produced. I'm not certain it is. Um, and it's got the uh, what's that? The Enterprise. I hope I don't embarrass myself there, but I'm not a Trekkie. Yeah, nice machine, nice machine. Um, a couple more arcades here. WrestleMania, Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 2. And, um, and then Operation Wolf down there. T2, Silent Scope. Operation Thunderbolt and Area... Is that Site 4? Never heard of any of these. Operation Thunderbolt and... Um, and down here, Operation Wolf. These are games I did play as a kid. I used to go to a boys' club in Wilmington, Delaware, and they had a they had some some machines that they would rotate through. Operation Wolf was there for quite a while, and then um, you know they had like Donkey Kong Three. I remember they had Russian Attack there. I played that quite a bit. Um, you might get a better shot of a junkyard. I think somebody was playing it when we were walking around before, but um, yeah, I might have to. I have to spend some time on this one too and figure out the theme on this. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, that's free play. Lanakin. I mispronounced it last time. I pronounced it Lanakin. It's Lanakin here on uh, in the eastern edge of Belgium, and it's supposedly the biggest uh, pinball hall in all of Belgium. So if you're in town, come check it out. We can get a better shot of F14 now. This gentleman's done playing. Um, this is the uh, this is a shot of a saying. If you get the if you get the ball up there, it fires back out, and you got to be quick on the on the flipper, or else it'll go right down the drain. Uh, it's a pretty nice system, eleven. It's got good music, and um, you can pick these up for uh, you know maybe twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, depending on condition. Of course, um, artwork's really nice on the side. Yeah, so anyway, it's free play. Well, knock in, so come check them out. Take it easy.